Today's message is Happy Halloween. Now notice, there's a question mark behind the Happy Halloween. And these are really, this is a, a very nice, friendly Halloween picture that I decided to, to share with you because, you know, Halloween is noted as one of those harmless types of holidays. On October 31st, we note that most urban and suburban streets will fill up with trick-of-treaters knocking on doors looking to have that, that bag of loaded um, sugary treats <laughs> that they might munch on for hours and days ahead. I remember the days we used to go out with that bag, man, and I'm telling you, we come home with a bag of stuff. <laughs> Study shows, though, that on Halloween, children between the ages of 5 to 14 are four times more likely to be killed by a car on Halloween than any other day of the year. Now, that's a startling stat. And you wouldn't think, I mean, you know, people are concerned about razor blades and apples, poison and candies and pedophiles. But the truth is, is that a child is more likely to die from a car accident, from running house to house, across the street, back and forth, and not paying attention to the actual traffic. Most of society see Halloween as a day of harmless fun for young and old alike. And you're going to be, I mean... When I show you some stats at the end of these slides today, what we found and what study have shown is that more adults celebrate Halloween than children. So it's for young and old alike. And the question is, is it? As believers and followers of Yeshua, what should be our response to Halloween? When we abandon truth, we make things up. I mean, that's just the bottom line. When we refuse to celebrate what Jehovah commands us to celebrate, we create things to celebrate. And we've created a lot of them. Birthdays, Mother's Day, Father's Day, New Year's Eve, <laughs> and all the recognized pagan holidays we get from the government. And there's a bunch of them. I mean, I leave home sometimes not realizing that because of government holidays, going to do my business as I normally do, banks are shut down, post offices are closed, some businesses not working, all because of government holidays that are given and people celebrating. Before Israel celebrated Jehovah, they indulged in pagan celebration. And what you're going to find, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why we create things to celebrate is because we are people who like to party. I mean, when you think about it, one of the highlights of a young person leaving home, going to college, is not to get an education. It's to party. The focus is on party. In elementary schools, they're having dances for the children to come and to, to dance and to have fun. In schools, there are constant parties. Parents are constantly being hit up to support this and to send in money for that and to pay a child's way for this. In Acts chapter 737, it says that Moses, who told the Israelites, God will send you a prophet like me from your own people, was in the assembly in the desert with the angel who spoke to him on Mount Sinai and with our fathers, and he received living words to pass on to us. But our fathers refused to obey him. Instead, they rejected him and their hearts turned back to Egypt. They told Aaron, make us gods. Now, we, for the most part, based on Cecil, D, Cecil B. DeMille's depiction of the Ten Commandments, we've all grown up to believe that there was only one God and that was the golden calf. But the fact of the matter is, is that there were several gods that were made by, by Aaron while Moses was up in the mountain. Now the question is, is, here it is, these people who have come out of Egypt, they're at the base 
or they're, they're, they're near the mount where Jehovah has communicated, Moses is gone up into the mount. And because he was gone, they decide to throw a party. I mean, the rationale around that, that now they're going to have a party and their party must include something to worship. Now, the focus of the thing was that this is now the God who brought us out of the land of Egypt. So in some ways, the people always seem to want to incorporate the, the God who brought the people out of Egypt to their celebration. Now, it's interesting, even in this country, people, when they come to Mother's Day and Father's Day and birthdays and, and Christmas and Easter and some of these other things, they want to seemingly support these celebrations with a scripture or a word from the Almighty. You see, this is what justifies the celebration of this thing or this day, is that we incorporate the Almighty into our celebration, and now we don't feel as if we're doing something that is of pagan or of idolatrous origin. The people here said, make us... Make us a God who will go before us. Moses is gone. We don't know what happened to him. He's been up there for a long time. But we don't feel like we can go forward unless we have some kind of God. And in this case, it is the God that we will make with our own hands. This is what idolatry is, is we make something up with our own hands or our own imagination, and then we attribute some type of scripture to it, some type of belief to it, to where now it doesn't seem like we've just gone out to lunch in idolatry or just become total pagan. We have some semblance of the Almighty in our conscience. And we want to incorporate him in what we do. As for this fellow Moses who led us out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. That was the time they made an idol in the form of a calf. They brought sacrifices to it and held a celebration in honor of what their hands had made. But God turned away and gave them over to the worship of the heavenly bodies. Disagree with what is written in the book of the prophets. Did you bring me sacrifices and offerings 40 years in the desert, O house of Israel? You've lifted up the shrine of Molech and the star of your God, Rephon, the idols you made to worship. Therefore, I will send you into exile, not just to Babylon, but beyond. Father has always had an issue about worshiping him in conjunction to or worshiping something other than him in his presence. And the interesting thing is, is that we're all always in his presence. See, there is no place you can go where you're not in his presence. But we, because of our finite mind, have a tendency to think that if we're not in the presence of believers or in the structure of the church, if we're in some form of place where there's darkness and these things are permitted, then obviously the Almighty doesn't see what we're doing. Because the concept of really the omnipresence um, of the Almighty, the omniscience, this is the all-knowing and he's everywhere at the same time idea have a tendency to slip our mind because we are people who look, who walk by sight more than we walk by faith. Now, you can say that you're a person who walk by faith, but you know what's in your heart. At least I know what's in mine. And I have to tell you, there are times when I have to remind myself that I am a believer in Messiah, a, a son of the Almighty and I have to be reminded of 
the need to walk by faith, especially when things aren't happening the way I think they should be happening. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus. Now, here is a second place in the Bible besides the book of Hebrews where the translators translated Jesus instead of Joshua. The King James has at least two of these, these verses where Joshua is the correct translation, but instead it's Jesus. Which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles whom God drove out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David. And so up until David, there was all of these things that were taking place. Remember, a fellow named Saul lost his kingdom because he did a few things that the father didn't particularly like. One, he was rebellious. He did his own thing. Even after he had received the instructions of the Almighty, he says, you go in there and you destroy everything. But instead, he decided he was going to keep some stuff. And for what purpose? That he might use those things to worship. The other place, he literally went to a witch now, you, you're going to find that the central person or focus of Halloween is depicted by a, a witch. But we're going to see, what is the, why does the father have such a problem with witches? <laughs> and then how is it that the father who has such a problem with witches his people dressed their children up and dressed themselves up as a witch in celebration. Who found favor before God and desired to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob, but Solomon built him a house. So up until David, David who came in and brought unity to Israel, and then Solomon, who maintained that unity until his death. And then Israel went into different paths. Now, how should believers in Messiah deal with Halloween? See, on your job, you're going to have people saying, happy Halloween. There's going to be a day to where folks are going to dress up. Now, maybe not everybody's job. There's some folks who you don't have to deal with that, but many of you who are in secular employment, you know that you're going to be having to deal with some of this stuff. And those of you whose children are in school, you know that you're going to have to be dealing with some of this stuff. And whether you are in a secular employment or your children are in a school, when you go to the supermarket, when you go to the mall, when you go to to certain places of business. The decorations are out there. The, the, the spider webs and the black cats. The candy at the bank. The wrappings on the candy that is given to the children. <laughs> the lady at the supermarket, the woman at Walmart. And the fellas. You understand what I'm saying? So whether you celebrate it or not, you are surrounded just like the children of Israel. When the father brought them into the land, they were surrounded by all of these people who didn't particularly worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And just as they were surrounded, we are even more so surrounded because unlike the children of Israel who had a land where their enemies had been driven out, we live in a land where our enemies are our next door neighbors. And in some cases, in our own house. 
how should we deal with it in the market, even in our neighborhoods? I would dare say that every one of you in this room live in a neighborhood that there is some form of Halloween decoration. Here's some facts. Is it a Christian holiday? Is Halloween a Christian holiday? No. Now, with that being said, it originated. Halloween evolved out of a Catholic holiday called All Hallows Eve, which occurs the day before All Saints Day. Although All Hallows Eve is not what was celebrated, it was All Saints Day, generally celebrated on November 1st after Pope Benedict or Pope Gregory changed it. November 1st, the day after October 31st, was the day designated to celebrate All Saints Day. So Halloween was never a Christian celebration a Christian holiday. It was the day after. All Saints Day originally was celebrated on May 13th, and in the Orthodox Church, it continues to be celebrated in late spring on the first Sunday after Pentecost, which in turn is seven weeks after Easter. Now, Pope Gregory III is commonly credited with moving it in the ninth century to, October, to November 1st, although the reasons for the move, there is no real information. When there is no real information, speculations begin to arise. A 12th century writer suggested the change of the day was because Rome could support large numbers of pilgrims in November than in May. Now it's interesting, Rome is the same size in May as it is in November. But it was suggested some even suggested because of the weather. Another argument is that All Saints Day was moved to November 1st to co-opt the Celtic Irish celebration called San Sowin or Sowan or Sowans. Sowin. Is Halloween pagan? Yes. The pilgrims banded the celebration of Halloween in America because of its pagan roots. As a matter of fact, Halloween was not celebrated in America until 1845. And it is surrounded by the understanding that during this particular time is when a large flood of Irish immigrants came to this country. During the potato famine of 1845 through 1846, they brought with them the old Druid holiday of Halloween. Gradually celebrating Halloween spread throughout the rest of the country. The common practices associated with Halloween, such as costuming and giving of treats, are associated with pagan and now secular celebrations. Now what's really interesting is that even when the, the All Saints Day was being celebrated, it had absolutely nothing to do with candy and costume wearing. It was really celebrating and in some cases people identified worshiping of the dead. Almost all stories about the origin of Halloween correctly state that Halloween had its origins among the ancient Celts and is based on their Feast of Samhain. However, a writer in the 18th century incorrectly stated that Samhain was named after the famous Celtic God of the Dead. Many religious conservatives who opposed Halloween, Druidism, and Wicca picked up this belief without checking the accuracy and accepted it as valid. Now, when you do a search to try to find this Sawin, this God of the Dead, you would be hard-pressed to find it. And where you will find it, though, would be in the books of religious writers. See, one of the things you have to understand about books, ladies and gentlemen, and I've said this before, that if I write the first book on a subject, 
I do the research. I write the first book on the subject. Then because of writer's requirements, I now have to quote my sources whenever I write a book. So now those who write on this subject after I write the first book, all are going to start quoting me. See? And then the next book is going to quote the writer who wrote that book and me. Now, what if my information is wrong? Then I would be a correct quote, but the information is still wrong. And so now all of the reference material you find on this particular subject is written by Christians who quoted other Christians out of fear. Why? Because they wanted to demonize something that was already demonized. They just didn't know how to do it. Modern day Sawin is the day when many Wiccans believe that their God dies Later to be reborn, Wicca is a neo-pagan, earth-centered religious religion. Thus, Sawin is not a god of death. It actually began as a yearly observation of the death of a god. Now, this is Wicca. Wicca is the only one who really take credit. Of course, Druidism. Wiccan website mentions Sawin as October 31st most often recognized as, and I'm quoting them now, their New Year. You see, in this country, New Year's is celebrated in, no, in December. Uh, I'm sorry, January 1st. New Year's Eve is celebrated no, uh, December 31st. The Bible points New Year's as the beginning of the month or a bit beginning of the Aviv. Nisan is a Babylonian name which has absolutely no meaning other than the name of a month. Aviv is the condition of a barley, of the barley. Religious Jews celebrate the new year in the seventh month, talking about um, Rosh Hashanah. And so you have these New Year celebration and just as you have traditional New Year celebration that is not biblical, you have other religions who have their New Year's. And when I was in the Missouri Synod Lutheran, when I was in the Baptist, when I was in the Christian Reformed, every one of those organizations had their own church calendar. And the church calendar usually ref referenced or referred people to the actual bulletins that would now be practiced within these congregations around the world beginning on the same particular day. So that all of the congregations, no matter where you were, they would be reading from the same bulletins, reading from the same scriptures, and pro probably preaching even today now Sermons are sent from the headquarters to the different pastors in those denominations to make sure that just as the pastor over in Australia is preaching on this particular topic during this particular time of the church calendar, the pastor in Japan is preaching the same thing in that denomination. Now, this probably evolved out of, you know, the... Torah portions, where you have people around the world all reading the same verses, the same portion, no matter where they are in the, in the country or outside of the, that country, to put everybody on the same page. The Wiccans say it represents the final harvest when the crops were safely stored for the coming winter. As the veil between the worlds of life and death is thin on this night, they take this time to remember their beloved dead. Sawin is the name of the holiday. There is no evidence of any god or demon named 
Sawin. Now, one of the things about Christians is Christians always like to come up with names of demons and spirits. One of uh, <laughs> my Facebook friends, former elder, you know, now there's the spirit of uh, Gorbachev. There's the Russian dictator spirit. Some of you all may be familiar with the spirit of Jezebel. And with the spirit of Jezebel, there's a spirit of Ahab. You know, you got all kinds of Leviathan spirits. <laughs> you got spirits as long as the, 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 the year, the month, because people are constantly creating spirits to associate some kind of activity or practice or behavior. You see, if a woman is strong, she's got a Jezebel spirit. You all know it. <laughs> Why can't a sister be strong and not have a Jezebel spirit? Because if, if, if she's permitted to be strong, then her husband must have an Ahab spirit. He's weak. <laughs> but there is no demon, Saweed, you see. Anyway, a fellow by the name of Rowan Moonstone, who is a Wiccan, and the word Wiccan here is reference to which? Comments. I've spent several years trying to trace the great god Sawin, and I've yet to find seminal source for the same. The first reference seems to be found from Colonel Valency in the 1700s and then Lady Wilde in her book, Mystic Charms and Superstitions, Advances Sawin, Lord of the Dead Theory. Valency, of course, was before the work done on Celtic religion in either literature or in archaeology. The Irish English Dictionary published by the Irish Text Society defines Sawin as follows. Sawin, all hallowed, the feast of the dead in pagan and Christian times, signalizing the close of harvest and the initiation of the winter season, lasting till May, during which troops, especially the Fian, were quartered. The Scottish Gaelic Dictionary similarly defines Halloween as Hallowtide, the Feast of All Solas, Sam and Fween, End of Summer. J.C. Cooper, author of the Dictionary of Festivals, identifies Sawin as Sawin or Sawin. Celtic 31 October Eve of 1st November was the beginning of the Celtic year, the beginning of the season of cold, dearth, and darkness. Now it's important to try to, I'm, I'm bringing this information to you because the term Halloween is associated with a season, a time of year, October 31st. Now, of course, when it came down to Pope Gregory changing it from May to October, many felt that, okay, why is he doing that? Because there's not a whole lot of history associated with his reasoning. As a matter of fact, it's still being debated. Why did, he, why did he just all of a sudden change the day from worshiping or All Saints Day, acknowledging the saints that are dead, to a totally different day? But you'll notice the same thing was done when it came down to the idea of Christmas as it is celebrated in different parts of the world. Everybody's not celebrating it on the same day. The East and the West is different as it relates to what day this particular holiday is supposed to be celebrated. So because people couldn't really come to some conclusion or get into the mind of Pope Gregory, he must have done it in order to try to Christianize a pagan practice. That's the logical conclusion, although there is no fact, because Pope Gregory didn't say why he did it. He just did it. And of course, being the Pope, if you do a thing, all your followers have to follow the thing you did. <laughs> Wiccans have attempted to reconstruct the ancient Celtic religion. They include this festival 
as one of their eight Sabbaths. <laughs> now you say Wiccas have a Sabbath? Let me tell you something. Every religion has some kind of Sabbath. They call it a convocation, which is a Sabbath. In some cases, it's a high Sabbath. And on these particular days is when individuals put a greater emphasis on their deity. In this particular case, it's one of eight Sabbath seasonal days of celebration. They do not acknowledge the existence of a god of the dead named Sawin or a similar deity by any other name. Modern day Druids and other neo-pagans also celebrate Sawin as a special day. Now, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, before, before we go one step further. Every believer should always be suspect if you are worshiping something that you consider to be religion, religious, holy, and the world, which is not holy, celebrates it as well. Now, you can try to take Christ out of Christmas and put him in this or whatever the case may be. But let me tell you something. If you're celebrating someday that the world who don't worship your Elohim is celebrating, that's a suspect and it should raise a red flag. So either they're trying to take something from you <coughs> or you are trying to take something from them. You can't have it both ways. Easter, how is it that Easter is celebrated by the world? And the church. How is it that Christmas is celebrated by the world and the church? How is it that Halloween is celebrated by the world and the church? And now these wars rage over who it rightfully belonged to when none of it is in the Bible. And if it's not in the Bible, how can you lay claim to it? Let the world have Christmas. <laughs> we don't want Christ. Maybe you do. I don't. I want Yeshua. I'm not trying to get Christ. I don't want him. I don't want none of the stuff that is associated with him. Are you not calling yourself a Christian? No, I'm not. No, I am not a Christian. So if you're looking for a Christian minister, you are in the wrong place. I used to be till I crossed over. Richard Bircher from Massachusetts, one of my former colleagues, Congregation of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod writes, nothing in the extant literature or in the archaeological finds support the notion that there ever existed a god of the dead known as Sawin. Though hundreds of gods' names are known. Rather, Sawin is the name of the festival itself. It means summer's over and merely referred to the end of one year and the beginning of the new. The Germans celebrate Oktoberfest. Many churches celebrate the fall harvest. Why? Because they're not celebrating tabernacle. And then people trying to make tabernacle and Thanksgiving the same. Folks want to put some guy, well, should we celebrate? Well, Thanksgiving is a Christian holiday. And I'm thinking, okay, where is that at? Well, it kind of coincides with tabernacle. Listen, it's either Thanksgiving or it's tabernacle. So which one is it? Now, understand that most of the holidays, Easter, Christmas, are given to us by the Catholics. And they put it in the Bible, associate some scriptures to it, and therefore it is something biblical.
when the fact of the matter is that not, that's not the case. Churches that celebrate the fall harvest is, is doing just that. They're celebrating the fall harvest. They're not celebrating tabernacle. And so fall harvest in, in association with Halloween as an attempt to put Christ in the holiday. Now, this is one of the churches in my neighborhood. And there are several of them all around this city. It's for some reason or another, the churches here in Charlotte are fascinated by selling pumpkins. Jack-o'-lanterns. How in the world did jack-o'-lanterns become part of the church? We know we, there's history as to who celebrated with the jack-o'-lantern. And I was driving down the street and I was watching, you know, all kinds of people in this churchyard buying pumpkins. And over in the corner, you can see it. Those of you who are online, I'll put my little mouse there, but you can see it. Well, you can see it here. You, you see my mouse? Right over there, there's a there's a, a, a round bale of hay with the face of a jack-o'-lantern painted on it, and the parents taking pictures with their children in the church park, in the churchyard. There it is. That's a better picture of it. All for the sake of taking this pagan holiday and making it Christian. And then on the sign, people are a little like jack o' lanterns. God removes the icky stuff so his light can shine. Oh, that sounds so sweet. I mean, it just makes your heart melt. Oh, I wonder who came up with that. You should put all your quotes in a book and sell them to church or buy. Buy anything, like Mikey. <laughs> there is nothing Christian about Halloween. Here's the primary focus of it. One, it deals with death. Everything around Halloween seems to be acknowledging the dead. Even All Saints Day is the acknowledging, the remembrance, the worship of the dead. And then there's fear and horror. All of these little ghostly, ghoulish, dressed up children the music, the sound, during this time of year, you turn on TV, there's all forms of horror flicks. During this time of year, all of the sadistic horror flicks come to the movie houses. And evil, devil worship, and the occult. These are all attributes of Halloween. And no matter how much you try to put Christ in it, it doesn't remove these things from it. There is absolutely no Christian significance to be found in Halloween. Now, I don't need to tell you all messianics that, but, you know, I know that a lot of people who come into this ministry are either still Christians or former Christians or crossing over. And you say, well, you know, brother, why are you so tough on the Christians? See, I look at Christianity. It's hard to separate Christianity, Christ, from Christmas and from Jesus and from all things Christian, which generally relate to the removal of all things Torah. There is no Sabbath. There is no feast. Except the feast we create. 
The Christian church is not celebrating Passover. They're not celebrating unleavened bread. They're not keeping the seventh day Sabbath. They're not celebrating the Feast of Tabernacle or observing the new moon of Yom Teruah, Yom Kippur. Jesus did it all. And we don't have to do nothing, just believe. So I'm not trying to be hard on Christians, just exposing it for what it is. Now, I had another sign. <sighs> I should have put it there. Well, you know what? No, I don't. Let me keep it moving. Halloween is a day which you celebrate. The Main Street or Main State Prison allowed members of a witch coven, the Coven of Dawn, to hold a two-hour service on the feast day they call Sawin, Halloween, after the Druidic Festival of Year's End. And it stated, this is our time to give praise to our Lord and Lady for the bountiful harvest, said the founder of the goddess-oriented coven. When you associate yourself with Halloween, you're associating yourself with all things Halloween. You can't just take the good, take, take what you want and leave the rest. It's all there. He said that 75 inmates have been initiated into the religion since it started in 1981. This report is from Observations 1187 by way of the What in the World information sheet. In October 1989, issue of the Baptist Bulletin magazine, it reported in the news section, a U.S. Air Force physical therapist who says she has been a practicing witch for four years, won permission to take Halloween and seven other days off as religious holidays. And I would dare say that those other seven days weren't the high Sabbaths of the Feast of Jehovah. A spokesman at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio said regulations require that Patricia Hutchins be accorded the same freedom to express her religious beliefs as any other religious believer. So you got Christians celebrating a day that known witches, identified witches are celebrating. Isn't that interesting? Those witches stole Jesus. They stole our holiday. No, they didn't. The Pope changed the day. It was theirs to begin with. When asked, does anyone today cel celebrate Sawin Halloween as a religious holiday, a major witches organization responded, yes. Many followers of various pagan religions such as Druids. And you could, you could research this stuff. This is all readily available, so you don't have to take my word for anything. Just, just, just look it up. You got the PowerPoint, and these PowerPoints will live on in perpetuity as long as our website is up and YouTube and live stream. So you can go back and see these. As a matter of fact, you know, this too is going to be part of our di discipleship training and we're going to transcribe this. So even if the government takes the Internet away, when you get these uh, PowerPoints and you get these transcriptions, make sure you download them. That way you got a hard copy. They said, yes, many followers of various pagan religions, such as Druids and Wiccans or witches, observe this day as a religious festival. They view it as a memorial day for their dear friends, similar to the national holiday of Memorial Day in May. Now imagine this. You know, we get Memorial Day off, but what is Memorial Day? It's a day to honor the, the dead. Now is something wrong with honoring the dead? You be the judge of that. 
It is still a night to practice various forms of divination concerning future events. Also, it is a time to initiate new projects. And this is from the Cult Watch Response, October 1988, Volume 1, Number 1. The fact is Halloween and, and all the practices associated with it is witchcraft. The bulk of the world has been desensitized to witchcraft, and this is evidenced by record-breaking sales from movies like Harry Potter and Twilight. Almost every young person on the planet have seen Twilight. What is Twilight about? Vampires and sorcery and witchcraft. And yet it's one of the highest grossing series in American movie history. Second to Potter's house, a Potter's Harry Potter. Now think that, that's amazing. That this Christian society have spent so much money along with the Brits on watching vampires, sorcerers, witchcraft on the big screen and eat it up. This is why Jehovah says, listen. Listen. When you get into this land, you make sure you drive all of those people out because if you don't, you'll end up doing the things that they're doing. You'll worship me like they worship their God. You'll participate in their practices. Don't let your sons marry their daughters. Don't let your daughters marry their sons because now you're going to lose your own children because let me tell you something, and, and let's just be clear about this, ladies and gentlemen. Following Jehovah is not for wimps. You got to die to some stuff. You got to die to yourself. You got to put yourself down on purpose in order for him to live in you. The world doesn't want to do that. They just want to bring God and put him in the mix of what they're worshiping and what they're practicing so they don't have to give of anything and still have him. And that's the world we live in. This is where our family is. This is where our children are. This is where our neighborhood kids are or children. I'm trying to change my language. I don't refer to children as kids anymore. Because I looked it up. You know, I looked it up before. But kids are usually associated with goats, which are wild and unruly. And there, there, there's, there's, there's definitions. There's, there's things that are associated with words. And when you speak words, you speak the things that is associated with those words by virtue of spirituality, because as spiritual beings, our words are spirit. And you can take it lightly if you want to. I'm just refining me. Because I'm seeing things that are not good by things that I've simply done and just said for granted. Look at all those kids over there playing. And what are they doing? They're playing. They're wild. They're unruly. My children are not kids and neither are yours. But if you want to call them kids, don't come complaining when they're wild and unruly. Because you're pronouncing wild and unruly over them by the very words that you're using to identify them by. Spending in the United States this year is estimated to reach $6.9 billion on Halloween. This is a little down from 2012 when $8 billion were spent. More adults will participate in Halloween than children, and here are the stats. Between the ages of 18 to 24, 85% of that population will celebrate Halloween. 85%, 85.3%. Between the age of 18 and 24, 25 and 34, 76.5%. 
35 to 44, 71% of adults in that age range. On average, you're looking at about 74% of this nation in this age range. 47.5% will decorate their home or yard. 43.6% will wear a costume. 13.8% will even dress up their pets. This is stats that are done from your credit card. From your purchases. And they, they anticipate what kind of money is going to be spent this year compared to what is spent last year. Look at the trends going into next year and anticipate what kind of money is going to be spent. There are companies, they only show up this time of year. You, you driving down the street, look over in the mall and there's big Halloween signs. You've drove that place. You've driven down that street. I don't know how many times this year. You've never seen that before. It shows up during this time, and when this season is over, guess what? They're gone. What are they doing? They're taking advantage of these stats that they're gathering from your spending habits. There's people watching your spending, especially those of you who use credit cards. The percent who plan on celebrating Halloween, 68.5%. Percent who plan on wearing a costume, 43.9%. Percent who will also dress their pets, 11.5%. Percent who plan to throw or attend a party, 34%. Percent who will hand out candy. And this is where many of you all are caught up in the whole Halloween spirit. Because when they come knocking on your door, trick or treat, you're going to hand, you go open up the door and hand out some candy, some of you. Why are you doing that? You're celebrating Halloween. Oh, I'm just being a, a, a good neighbor. Be a good neighbor. You don't want your tree full of toilet paper. You don't want the trick. So you hand out the tree. Now you can go through and find out all the history behind the trick or treater. I'm just trying to give you some facts. The percent who will carve a pumpkin. Percent who will visit a haunted house, 22.9%. Percent of parents who will take their kids, their children, trick-or-treating, 32.9%. Percent of households that will decorate their home or yard, 49.5%. Percent who plan to use last year's costume. 16.6% percent who plan to make their own costume. Now, the fabric people want this information. See, Joanne Fabric and all these other fabric companies, they need this information because it's going to tell them what type of fabric, what style of fabric, what design of fabric to offer during this time of year. Top children costumes for 2013. Princess, 8.2. Animal, 6.1. Batman, 5.4. Action superhero, 5.1. Spider-Man, 3.9. Vampires, 2%. Not up there. I didn't want to create another slide. Top adult costumes for 2013. Which, number one. 9.65,141,241 people to be exact will dress up as a witch during Halloween. Batman, 5.4%. Vampire, 5.0. 2 million seven hundred. One seven hundred fourteen thousand of our neighbors. Zombie, two million three hundred and forty four thousand of our neighbors. Look at this. You've got over 10 million people walking the streets looking like vampires, witches and zombies. 
during this Christian holiday. Pirates. <laughs> so what does Jehovah say about witches? Well, I'm glad you asked. You should not suffer a witch to live. Now, I know these people who are, who are dressing up like witches aren't really witches. Or are they? What type of deviant behavior do they display? What type? What type? I mean, imagine what type of mindset that a person has that help them to determine they're going to dress up like a witch instead of dressing up like a Playboy bunny. <laughs> like, what's the difference? Really, there is none. There's a deviant mindset behind the mask. I was looking at a report yesterday. There's a whole nother reason now to become concerned about Halloween, and that is the diseases that they're finding in these masks. When you go to the mask shop and you try on that mask, imagine how many faces before your face got into that mask. A study was done. They went into a mask shop. They bought 12 masks, and every last one of the masks was sent to a, 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 a scientist who swabbed them and began to identify the different types of bacteria that was in those masks. And all 12 of those masks had a variety of bacteria growing on the inside of that mask. They were startled. Deuteronomy 18.9, when you are coming to the land which Jehovah your Elohim gives you, you shall not learn to do after the abominations of these nations, of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that make his son or his daughter to pass through the fire or that use divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. You see, when you separate yourself from the Torah, all things become permissible. You know, well, Paul says all things are permissible, but everything is not, you know, expedient. All things are lawful, but everything is not expedient. You don't understand what Paul is saying because Paul is not saying that witchcraft is lawful. He's not saying that consulting with familiar spirits, palm readers, and, 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 and the most harmless of them all is that daily zodiac sign in the paper and, you know, that app that you might have on your on your phone that identify, okay, what kind of day am I gonna have today? What is my what does my horoscope say? Oh, you're gonna have a great day today. Matter of fact, you're going to meet someone. Ooh, I would like to meet somebody today that is going to answer all of my problems. So you're going through the day looking, okay, where is this person I'm supposed to meet? And where did you get your advice from? Jehovah? The Holy Spirit? Oh, yeah, well, God can use astrology. He can use anything. You, hear what, you, you see the mixing? Because the moment you divorce yourself from the commandments, from the law, this stuff doesn't matter anymore. There is no boundaries. There is, there is no 
restrictions. There is, there is nothing that is off limits. Jehovah specifically put things off limits for his people because the moment you step over a line, there are a whole mo- bunch of other lines you'll find yourself over before it's all said and done. And of course, you know, if you are a Christian and they're selling jack-o'-lanterns on the church lawn and you're taking pictures and, and, and sending them to your friends and family and now you're saying to them, you don't celebrate Halloween, what's wrong with you? Pope Gregory, Pope Gregory. Now, wait a minute, you want to use Pope Gregory now, but don't your church believe that the Pope is the Antichrist? Hold it. I never thought about that. Sure you haven't. Because you want to do what you want to do and you'll use what you want to use or what makes sense that you can use to do what you want to do. And that what you don't want to do, you'll use the very same thing to argue against it. Pope Gregory. Deuteronomy 18, 12, for all that do these things are an abomination unto Jehovah. What things? Those who make their sons or daughters pass through the fire, that use divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. See, growing up, there was these games, Dungeon and Dragon and Ouija boards and all kinds of other things that people saw as harmless fun. Individuals who play these, I forget some of, some of the games, Dungeon and Dragon online with other people in other countries in other states. There was one fella, he got so obese I mean, obese to the point to where he had stuff growing off of him. All he did was drink Diet Coke by the gallons and play these video games. And became possessed. For all that do these things are an abomination unto Jehovah, and because of these abominations, Jehovah your Elohim will drive you out from before him. Now, do you think Jehovah see any difference in you playing like you a witch and an actual witch? Why would one of his people play like they're a witch? Worse yet, why would one of his people dress up as a Bible character on Halloween? Because, of course, you know, you got to sanctify this pagan day. I'm not going to dress up as a witch or a ghost or a goblin or a necromancer or a sorcerer or Madonna. I mean, um, um. anyway. Got where I was. Instead, I'm going to dress up as a Bible character or an angel. See, I'm going to bring some holiness to this unholy festival. Hallelujah. And then there were some folks in the ministry we were part of, and I went with it for one year. It's like Hallelujah night. We got to redeem Halloween. How are you going to redeem Halloween? Same way you're going to redeem Christmas. Yeah. The more you try to redeem Christmas, the more you become entangled in it. Well, I don't, we, we don't bow down to the Christmas tree. And, you know, we don't deal with the, the reason I celebrate Christmas is because, you know, it is Jesus's birthday. And where'd you get that from? 
Where is that at in the Bible? See, just because they read you Bible stories on Christmas <laughs> don't mean that it's in the Bible. Now, the works of the flesh, Galatians 5.19, are these. Because this is what we're dealing with, is the works of the flesh, the desire to celebrate with the world. It's amazing how many of Jehovah's people would much rather celebrate the same holidays the world around them is celebrating, while at the same time reject Jehovah's holy days. This is what Christians do. Now, we ain't under the law, but Halloween was instituted by Pope Gregory. Oh, we ain't under the law, but we do celebrate Easter because that's the resurrection. Oh, we ain't under the law, but we celebrate Christmas because that's Jesus' birthday. And where do you get this foolishness from? That would be my question. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, and you know what? On Halloween, there's going to be a lot of that. Because Halloween is a license to do whatever you want. I know a couple of years before we left Michigan, Detroit, Michigan, on Halloween was almost burnt down as a city. I mean, it was so much crime that year on Halloween. It's amazing the crime stats. I, I, I looked at some crime stats, and during Halloween, it is a huge issue. Another issue that people, what, what precip precipitated some of this study is because there are people who are trying to pass a law that pedophiles would have to put on their doors no candy here. And so the focus was that there would be pedophiles abducting children on Halloween because this would be a pedophile's mecca. But in the study, what they found out is that most children who are sexually Molested are molested by family members. And that the percentage of sexual molestation among children on Halloween was lower than a child being poisoned by candy. But that's, that was the whole issue is to, is to identify how can we make some stricter laws on pedophilia being that these innocent children, these innocent kids <laughs> are out looking for candy. You hear what I'm saying? Now, I purposely used kids there. Because a lot of them are grown. You understand what I'm saying? As the research showed, more adults celebrate Halloween than children do. So, what I decided to do with this particular teaching is to end with a question and then to begin to have some dialogue. Because here's the deal. The chances of you getting through between now and Next week, Sabbath, what day is the 31st? Is that a Thursday? The chances of you getting, getting from now to next Sabbath without someone saying happy Halloween to you is slim. How do you respond? How do you respond to that person who's offering you those tasty treats, the pumpkins and and all of that wonderful stuff. Because if you really wanted to use 
this time as an opportunity to share the truth. One of the ways you can start is by sharing the truth behind those, the reason those tasty treats are being disseminated in the workplace. And those tasty treats are typically going to be something orange, orange frosting, something looking like jack-o'-lanterns, something with little, you know, witches and black cats and black sheeps and goblins and spider webs in the decorations, the workplace being decorated. For those of you who work in secular workplaces, the chances of you getting past this next week without someone offering you something, wishing you a happy Halloween, or something associated with Halloween is slim to none. What do you do? What do you do? Should believers in Messiah celebrate Halloween? And if you believe so, why? And if you don't, why not? See, how do you deal with this? And those of you who are joining us online, the same question is being posed to you. I'm sure that there's plenty of chat on the subject already. But that's how we're going to close today. 